I feel like that one's such a head bopper. That was good. I hurt my neck. I was really getting into it over here. I'm like, thank goodness, is the camera off? I don't, okay. I don't know. I don't know why we're headbanging. We ain't got no hair. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, you know, getting that out of there. Yeah, maybe that's what happened. Maybe we shook it right off. God, yeah, there you go. Yeah, it's that it couldn't handle us. We were too, too awesome. Yep, yep. We were. We were. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, uh, yeah, welcome everybody. Yeah, what's up, everybody? How are we doing, Gavin? Awesome. I'm doing well. This is uh, this is actually like one of my my most enjoyed. Like, because this is what I originally had created was like this sensor thing, so we could see out front of us, and then yeah. like all the way. To, like, I was like, when are we gonna when are we gonna put it in? When are we gonna put it in, Brian? I want to put this thing in. And he was just like, gear down, big shift. <laughs> um, but wait, we must make it even more frustrating <laughs> boy we had some fun though like you, there's a lot of fun in the uh the the proof of concept prototyping phase you know when we you know a little insight when we started this project came up with the idea we want to try to recreate realistic robotics introductory courses inside of unreal engine using physics and then you know of course gatlin jumps in there he's all about it he's our unreal master and he starts prototyping things and showing me lasers and Ro working robots like almost instantly and then we're fine tuning and then all of a sudden we're messing around with settings and robots are flying in the air we're laughing hysterically having a good time um and they weren't even supposed to be drones <laughs> nice uh, air <laughs> airborne but not uh not meant to be airborne but yeah we had a lot of fun uh, in those early early stages of of prototyping this and look where we are now man like uh you did an awesome job of taking all these assets and building a, a world and these lessons are there to give you a sense of like what it's like to actually program and code physical robots and it's wonderful and frustrating and uh and funny and so we're on lesson four here yes. which is super fun because you get to like flex that muscle you're like Conditional statements like if I see the line turn away, to if I don't see the line turn towards it, using that to navigate to follow the line. That's what we learned in lesson three. And now mm -hmm. in lesson four, we're like worried about actual safety of the cones in this case. <laughs> Worry about these cones. <laughs> like they're very expensive cones. So the deal uh, yeah. is like, well, maybe we're worried about our expensive sensor and our expensive vehicle that we made. Um, so what you got to do is you have to use a distance sensor looking outwards. And when it sees something, it needs to stop, right? Mm -hmm. And so we need to figure out how to get those controls together. Gatlin, can you help us? I I think I think I, I think yes. Actually, I don't even have to think about it. I got this. Is that a train that says that? I think I can. I think I can. <laughs> there, there was a train somewhere along the lines. There must have been. I'm sure. Something that. like that. <laughs> All right, y'all. So without further ado, a uh, quick kind of recap and talk about what we're actually going to be jumping into here. Um, I'm starting here inside the little robot town. Yay, this is fun. But we actually need to move to another map. Uh, so while we're loading up that map, I'll show you where it's at. And I'll, we'll jump into some of the documentation that we're going to be jumping in here too. Um, so remember, down here, we've got our robots kit right down here. Yay, there it is. Huzzah. And then inside of there, we've got this maps robot. So that's going to be helpful. Um, you can actually find it over here as well. So I'll just double click on that. And inside of here, we've got L4. So this is our lesson four plan, right? So let's go ahead and open up that one and go ahead and open up this first little map. It should only take a moment. Ta da! I'm going to actually grab this content browser. I'm just going to drag it down a little bit to give ourselves a little bit more 
real estate. So what is this robot? What is this robot going to be doing? Well, before we jump into actually examples, uh, let's make sure that we are all on the same page as it were, because <laughs> there's a, okay, I'll be here all week. All right. Mm -hmm. So training our visual robots, uh, we're going to be running with our um, collision detection kind of stuff, right? So we want to be able to tell whether or not we're going to be running into something. And this is actually something that's really common um, out there in the world. Uh, it's, a, it's a system called LIDAR. Um, kind of like radar, but it uses lasers. Um, and what we're going to be doing is we're going to be looking a certain distance out ahead of us. And you can see on these little robots, there's a little distance sensor up here on the top, right? A little foreshadowing. I'm going to bring this up later, right? It's going to be a thing. Um, so inside of here, this really kind of talks about, uh, and this is the student guide. This is not the lesson plan. This is the student guide. Um, so down here on page four, we start to talk about what it is that we're going to be going over. Uh, we can talk about LIDAR um, and how it's actually useful. Um, Actually, just recently, speaking of cool LiDAR toys, uh, for those of you that have LiDAR on your phones mm -hmm. um, and have the uh, the app that Quixel just put out, you can like use this LiDAR technology to scan stuff and put it into the Unreal Engine. This is insane. Like as of this recording, that's blowing my mind. Like it'll be like passe in like three months. I'm sure something cooler will come out. But until then, this LiDAR stuff is awesome. You have it at your fingertips, which is super cool. So you can create 3D models with it. Yay, right? I literally scanned my dog because that was the first thing available <laughs> when I did it. And it was amazing. It was so cute. And I'm like, look at my dog in 3D right on my phone. So what's what's entertaining about that, so quick tangent, uh, if the object is moving while you're doing this LiDAR thing, you can get some really cool artifacting. Just saying. NFTs aren't really mm. worth as much as they used to be, but you could still make some really cool three-dimensional objects to like print. Like, yeah, it'd be super fun. I'm, I'm, I'm really excited to see what kind of like artwork comes out of this, even though people are like, make sure it doesn't move. I'm like, no, 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 no. It's like having a moving object with a long shutter speed on a regular camera. That's like, true. You can be I'm so excited. Okay, mm -hmm. nerding out about that later. So, um, moving on. Uh, so, coding the connection. Um, what we're going to be doing is we're actually going to be taking stuff that we had created inside of lesson three and building upon that. Now, if you haven't gone through lesson three, don't worry. We've already got it set up and ready to go. If you have done lesson three, you can bring that robot in. I'm not going to do that this time around. I'm actually going to be starting the lesson from scratch. So as if I hadn't gone through lesson three, because sometimes that's kind of what happens, right? These lesson plans are, and uh, activities, you don't have to start from scratch. You can actually kind of jump in when you need it. You know, maybe you've already got the physical robots, right? So the robot that we're going to be working with here, it's going to be following a line. Um, now, we don't have said line in this world, but we will be getting to it, right? That's We're going to be setting up for that, right? So this thing has to follow the line. It has to be a smooth curve, like no like harsh angles, no acute angles, right? We don't want to put those in there because it's going to have a problem. Uh, flat surface. Um, we're going to stick with the flat surface, though that is not required if you really want to get down and like play with this stuff, right? Um, obstacles. We're going to have little obstacles that move. Uh, they're not as random as you might think. Uh, they might feel random because you're fighting them the whole time, but that's fine. <laughs> uh, what they're going to be doing is they're going to be moving at uh, specific increments. And this will make it be easier for you to actually go in and be like, okay, I want this to move you know, X amount of distance. And then by the time it gets to that barrel, and you'll see it in this next section, uh, we want it to actually get out of the way or we want it to hang there for a moment and then be able to like move so the robot doesn't bonk into it. So there's bits and pieces that go along with that one. Um, yeah, so they move out of the way of the actual line. So the rules to this... The robot must start driving immediately as soon as you play, and it stops when it reaches the end of the line. Uh, what that means is that you can't actually jump in and grab it and start playing with it. You're not allowed to. That's breaking the rules, right? Find your own find your own rules, but for this one, we're doing mm -hmm. right? uh, The robot's going to stray away from the line. If it does, go ahead and just stop it. You know, just reset the level. Just stop it and play it again, right? Or stop it, take notes. Right? For those of you that are taking notes, <laughs> take notes on it. Um, use that obser observation log. Uh, you'll find the link at the bottom of this PDF, by the way. Um, it should stop when it actually sees an obstacle. Okay, so I'll show you what that's going to do here in a moment. Um, and then resume when the obstacle gets out of its way. Now, in this case, the obstacle happens to be this wall back here, and that thing's not going to move. So it's just going to kind of you know drive around in circles, and we'll see that here in a minute. Uh, requirement. It needs to be able to see the obstacle out in front of it. Uh, it will see, quote unquote, the white border uh, on the floor, and then there's a black border that it will follow. Um, so this is actually used for automating robots that are working inside of places like uh, Amazon and uh, car manufacturing um, hospitals, and um, I think I think they're even used in like malls to like to help people get around from place to place. I'm not totally sure. It'd be awesome if not. I just gave somebody a million dollar idea. Sorry, mm -hmm. it was my mm -hmm. bad. Um, it should stop when it sees an obstacle, of course. We kind of already talked about that. Um, and then it follows the line like we did in lesson three. So it's seeing, quote unquote, seeing, um, yeah. which is 
this is really fun. I like that you say like you quote unquote seeing because it, you know, we interpret seeing like with our eyes and we're gathering all that information and computing it. But seeing is really like the sensor kind of giving you some feedback of like a difference of what it's pointing at. And so like you were just saying with those lines, like if you, if you paint a black line on a white, on a white surface and you use the difference of like light reflection as your seeing method, that's one way to do it. You could also do something like a magnet, you know, like, so you can, mm -hmm. you can have a, a, a magnetic sensor that's testing to see if, if it's detecting, you know, that magnetic response on, on a path or not. Mm -hmm. um, in, a, in addition to many other ways of using a sensor to gather that input to quote unquote see and differentiate mm -hmm. and decide what to do based on that. So seeing is definitely subjective and we've made it nice and simple for the purposes here, just so you don't have to deal with all the wonderful uh, exceptions that happen in the real world. <laughs> yeah, there was, this was, like I said, this was really a fun one to work on. Like it was like, mm -hmm. oh, we figured it out. And yeah, it's just super cool. And I highly suggest people just dig into it because it's super cool to check out. So our hands-on activity. So where are we on here? We're on page, we're on page six. So the hands-on activity. Uh, so let's learn about what these distance sensors do, right? And we're going to start by actually just watching it, right? So we're going to observe to see what's actually going on. And then we're going to be able to break this down inside the code and be like, ah, I see, I see, right? So let's get that sucker out of the way. So in this first level, remember, this is the one that we're in right here. Uh, bring this up. Oh, hello. Let's do that. Uh, come here, thing. Here we go. So we're in this distance one, right? So instead of here, I'm just going to go to this big play button that you see up here at the top of the screen. Go ahead and just hit the play button. And we'll watch what this bad boy does. Now I'm going to be able to zoom in a little bit, right? And um, if you can't hear it beeping, uh, that's because I didn't share my audio. I'm sorry. But once it actually reaches a certain closeness to the wall, it actually starts to turn, right? And you can see those numbers on it above it. Remember those numbers? I was talking about those numbers. You can actually see what it's doing. So what's happening is that that little sensor that you see out in front of it, once it actually reaches a value of 300, so three meters, so 300 centimeters, um, it says, oh, I'm too, cl too close to this thing. I actually need to turn, right? And in this case, this little bad boy is just going to turn around in circles. Now, there is one issue that we've definitely come to notice, and you'll see that the wheel is just kind of hugging that side, right? So one of the limitations of this robot, maybe not yours, if you decide to go ahead and make one, is that we can only see like directly in front of us, like a little pinpoint, right? So you know, how do we deal with this thing being so wide? Well, we're not going to dive into that, but that's something that I want you to kind of think about in the back of your mind as you're building this. Like, how does this actually work? Why is it behaving like this? How can I actually push this even farther? But to get that far, we definitely want to go ahead and take a look at what's actually going on. So let's go into our uh, 4.2 distance here. So let's go and open this one up. Now, this is one that you can definitely kind of play with, right? So this is our activity. So I'm going to kind of zoom down in here. I'm going to look to the side of it. Uh, by the way, uh, if you press one on the keyboard, it'll snap the camera behind you. These are the numbers at the top of the keyboard, not the 10 key. I hit two, it'll look directly above. If I hit three, it'll look at it at the side. So I want to look at it from the side, which is going to be really helpful. So if you're having a hard time navigating, you can use those hotkeys. So those are those. And if we take a look at our information here so let's come down here a little ways um, what we want to do is we actually want to start thinking about our sensor position like where is this sensor at how is this going to be most effective for what we're going to do right and this is our little sensor how far away should it be from the floor how far away should it be from what we're running into what kind of information are we going to give it remember garbage in garbage out right if we have this facing the floor it's only going to be looking at the floor and we're not worried about looking at the floor we're about worried about what's looking out ahead of us or maybe behind us sumo bots mm -hmm. right so what we're going to do so down here on page let's see where we're, we're on page eight um we want to go ahead and open this robot up and take a look at what's going on inside of it so we're going to move this out of the way so select the robot and over here on the far right hand side uh we can go into our edit blueprints let's use it in yellow so edit blueprints click on that and we'll just choose the top option here it says open blueprint editor da -da -da -da. and you should see something that looks a little bit like this so we have our events we have our run motors, and these are basically exactly what we were working with in our last one, right? So when the game plays, we're going to go ahead and run the robot. This function will go ahead and fire this event. It's basically the same event, right? And then we're going to go ahead and start turning the wheels. So cool. What does this look like in this robot? Now, this one is a little bit different. So if I go ahead and hit play, this is what it's going to do. It's just going to go forward. You'll notice the distance sensor says zero, and then 
bonk and it just stops and you can see the wheels are still going so it has been given no information as far as what it's supposed to do as it's moving forward right there's nothing in here just move forward that's all it's going to do so what we want to do is we want to actually put that sensor in there to start with and we want to tell that sensor to actually give feedback and then we want the robot to do something with said feedback right so let's put that sensor in there first. So up here in the top left-hand corner inside of our components, we wanna go ahead and add in that distance sensor. So if I click on add components and type in distance, in this BP distance, right? BP sensor distance, that's exactly what I want. And just enter and that'll bring that in. Now, what this has done is it's actually added in the sensor and we don't see it here inside of the graph. Woo, so what we need to do is we're gonna go into our viewport. So this little tab right here. I'll click on that inside of here you're like oh well where did it go it's magic no it's not magic it's just hidden if we select it over here in the side you can see we get a little outline of it here inside of here and we need to put this somewhere well i would suggest putting it out front so let's go ahead and use our move tool right here so we can click the move tool right here i can press w on the keyboard and then you can just grab this arrow that's actually set the same direction as the actual robot right so it's headed down the length of it Right, so this is the green one. Just grab that. I'm just going to pull this one forward. And really, what I'm doing is I'm trying to get it basically so it sits kind of outside of here. Now that I can see it a little bit easier, I want to rotate it because what's going to happen is the laser is going to come out along this red direction of the sensor. Right, it's like a little eyeball. So I'm going to go ahead and use my rotation tool. So you can go ahead and grab that from up here. Right, and press E on the keyboard. E for rotate. Don't know why. <laughs> I mean, I think we talked about this too. It's not double U, it's double V. Double V, yes. <laughs> it's, it's, ooh, that was a fun conversation. Yeah. Mm, all right. So now that I've got this in the right location and faced the right direction, now what we're going to do is actually start to set up the code. And let me show you what I mean by that because if I just were to play this, you'll notice that there's no red line coming out of there and my distance isn't reading anything. So just because we've got it on there, it's a game engine. Their game engines are really dumb. They only do what they're told to do. I mean, it's like most coding, right? So let's go back into our event graph and actually get this thing running. Now, the question that I would like to pose to y'all, and you can drop this down in the comments down below, right? Is when you walk up to a street and you want to cross it, what is the first thing that you're doing? Hopefully. You're looking both ways. Ooh, 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 I had my ooh, hand up the whole oh, time. Yeah, okay. I know. You, you always know the answer, so I'm not going to call <laughs> on you. All right, so we want to look before we actually start moving, right? So let's go ahead and take our move robot forward, and you can grab this little bar up here at the top of this, and because all these pieces are inside this comment box, I'm just going to drag it over here, right? And I want to disconnect this wire, so I'm going to hold down the Alt key on the keyboard, and if I click on the pin right here, it'll just take that off of there. So cool, that's all disconnected. <clears throat> Next up, what we want to do is we want to add in that distance sensor. Well, we had that physical one inside of our viewport and inside of our components over here, this is where that actual reference to it. So this is what's going to hold the code for it. So you can just click, drag that in there and let go. Ta-da, now we have our distance sensor. So now that we have it, we want to do something with it. Well, this is really easy. We've got all these things built for you. So this may feel very familiar, but what I'm going to do is just click and drag off the pin, pull out a wire and let go. And it's going to say, well, what do you want to attach to this thing? And if I type in run sensor, you can find this run distance sensor with threshold, right? So this very bottom one on the bottom of this list. Oh, sorry. That was really quick. Let me back that up. Undo. Run. Let's actually type in distance is where. This D-A-N-C-E. There we go. So we want run distance with threshold. Okay, the longer one with threshold. Boom. Now, if you want to do the calculation threshold yourself, you can, of course, use that other node that was in there. So that's totally fair as well. So as soon as the robot starts, we're going to go ahead and start running this thing. Now, let's talk about what's actually going on here on this node, because there's quite a bit happening in here. Uh, so we have our execution in. So as soon as this is actually executed, it's going to start running all of the information inside of here. Well, the next one down here is a sensor. Well, what kind of sensor are we running? Well, in this case, we are actually running a distance sensor, ta-da, a distance sensor, ta-da, right? So that we, we know this is happening. Now, the reason that this is important is because you may have multiple sensors on here. I was just talking about those robots that are in the sumo thing. Maybe you've got a sensor on the back or on the side and you want something to happen specifically. You can set it so that that is the sensor that's actually using this node, right? So thinking about that. 
All right, next up we have our max range. This is how far away the sensor is actually gonna be looking. Uh, this is in centimeters, so this is five meters out. Um, and then we have our threshold. So when it hits this threshold, as soon as it's whatever it is, is three meters away, that's when we want something to happen, okay? So five meters is how far I'm looking, but three meters and closer, that's when I'm gonna start applying the brakes or turning or setting something off. Who knows what it's gonna be, right? And then this bottom one down here is this draw sensor. This is whether or not you actually want to see this in game when it's running. That's totally up to you. I'm going to leave it on for example purposes. I think that it's very helpful. That's that red line that we saw out there earlier. Yeah. And now on the output part, we have this less than or equal to threshold. So if we've actually reached this 300, this one is going to fire because we are now equal to 300 or less than it. We're close to it, right? Now, if it's greater than, you know, so if it's, 301 or 300.9, you know, and up, this one's going to fire and something's going to happen, right? So that's how we kind of look at all of this information. Right. Now, so another way to look at that would be the uh, the top one, like maybe 300 is your safe distance. So you're like, the, the top one is like, that's unsafe. Like we're getting too close. I need to do something because we're getting too close. And the other one is like, okay, it's safe. Nothing's too close. So the bottom one is um, is safe and oh that's it just safe yep and the top one is unsafe so you get like that's how you could think of how this translates that you've decided that 300 is too close for comfort so anything 300 or closer we need to do some sort of some sort of solution to remedy that stop turn around hop up cry, whatever, beep your horn and keep going. <laughs> <laughs> you connect the wires this way. So they cry. <laughs> nice. <laughs> yeah. Right. So anyway, yeah, that, that's a good, and it's nice that this, uh, this little node has all the, that good stuff built right into it. Yeah. If you're feeling cool. brave, double click on it, go see what's in there. Ooh, mm -hmm. Yeah. Just don't, don't unconnect anything or do, I don't know. It's, yeah, it's your robot. I mean, it's your, it's your competition. So, Let's go ahead and run this really quick. And I want to show you the problem that we've just created because we've just created a bug. So I've compiled it first off. That's important, right? So let's go ahead and just drag this down here. And I'm going to leave this on screen down here. And I'm going to make sure that I am actually, yeah, cool. So I'm actually debugging uh, this robot. That's what this little drop down is that I've read up. Um, so right about here-ish, right? So I'm going to go ahead and hit play, right? And you can see that they fire, but then they just kind of fade away and stop. Right, And you can see that this thing is looking at a distance of 500 away now. So yay, this actually fired and did what it needed to do. But it's it's not continuously, oh, wrong one. It's not continuously looking out here, right? So we want to make it do that. So we need to create a loop. Oops, let's go ahead and just stop that. To do that, what I'm going to do is actually take this run robot and I'm going to connect it down here below. So grab that one. I'm going to hit control W. So that'll duplicate it. Duplicate, yeah. We're going to put I'm that up connect. on the screen. Control W for... Wooplicate. Wooplicate. I love it. So I'm going to go ahead and connect both of these right now because whether or not it's closer to it or farther away from it, I want it to actually fire. And I'm going to go ahead and show you. Let's actually make this really obvious, right? So remember, we said that the top was going to be safe and the other one was going to be bottom or unsafe. All right. Top one's unsafe. So we're going to go this way. I'm adding these little reroute nodes on here to make this really obvious. Oh, I love the reroute oh, nodes. These things are awesome. They're a little tricky to get a hold of. I do find that if you grab this bottom right-hand corner, they're a little easier to move. Yeah. Uh, also, a pro tip, if you select one, just like marquee select, so I'm just left mouse clicking and dragging, you can actually use the arrows to move these around too. Mm. On your keyboard, that which is, is pro also tip. helpful. Okay, nice. so I want to be able to see above and below. And here's another little trick, check this out. So if I select one of these guys, right? And if I hover just above it, right up here, I could actually open this up and we'll say unsafe, right? And we'll pin that so it's always visible. I'm going to select this little guy and we'll click there and we'll say safe. Right. And we'll pin that one. Right. So now, no matter how far away, those will always stay there. Oh, wrong one. I want just the tab. There we go. So we'll just put this right here in this corner. All right. I'm going to hit play. And right now you can see down here, it's like, oh, it's always safe. Like there's nothing out in front of me, which is awesome. Um, next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to eject myself from the pawn. And when I do that, that will allow me to actually grab this and move it around, right? So now let's like move my code here. And if I 
bring this over here and I start to push this toward here, as soon as it gets down to that 300 threshold, and you can watch the numbers on top of the distance down here, right? as soon as I get down to 300, you'll see that it'll swap. Nice. So we can see how this is actually working. Right. Love so that know visual that. feedback. That's awesome. Boom. Boom. And again, there is a beeping noise that's in there. Like, and you can change that, by the way. We're not going to get into that today, but you can actually change that sound. So there's that, which is awesome. Cool All thing right, about so robots, right? You get like a double, you get like a double visual feedback. Like you you actually see, whoa, it's getting clued too close, and you actually see the code switching mm -hmm. from hey i'm fine to oh no like uh, that's the the awesome thing about robots is how visual it is if you're a visually uh, minded learner mm -hmm. um, this kind of stuff will really fit nicely in your brain yeah this is that and that's one of the wonderful things about uh, the blueprint system here inside of Unreal. You can come up here and like debug like many different robots. If you had 20 or 30 of them in here, you can tell which one you're actually working with. Um, you will notice too, I'm going to zoom in on this one. It's just selected at the end of it because that's actually selected in my level. So that's helpful too. Like there's all kinds of little things hidden in the UI that are just super, super helpful. I very much thank Epic for all the cool stuff that they've been building in, into this, which is awesome. You also said a very important thing. You said 20 or 30 robots <laughs> because I, in this world why. in this world any individual person can have 20 or 30 robots in a single project which you would never have in any real robotics scenario so the beautiful part of these virtual robots is that you can build and build and build and accumulate and your imagination could run wild with no limitations I think mine's slipping and sliding. It's not just running. It's all over the it's place. It's definitely doing that kind of bash the door down Fortnite slide. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I but need to works. practice that. But I'm such a meat shield in that game. <laughs> all right. So I'm going from page 13 down to page 14. So you all know where we are in the actual uh, uh, lesson plan in here or student guide. Um, so now that we know that this thing is working and how it works, uh, let's actually make this uh, robot get some feedback and do something with it, right? So we were running the threshold, so I've disconnected these guys. And what we're going to do is we're going to actually make this robot move forward. So I'm going to move this out of the way. Um, if you want to delete these little guys right here, just select them, hit delete on the keyboard or backspace. That also works. So that's cool. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take my run robot and set it up here for a moment. Let's bring this back and bring our run robot over here because I'm going to need it. So when our robot is moving and we are uh, greater than the threshold, so we're in our safe area, right? We want to move the robot forward. So we're just going to take this and drop that in there. So if you're bringing over your robot from lesson three, this is where your lesson three code is going to sit, right? We want to make sure that it's actually in this little area down here below under the safe line, right? So under there, right? Now, if we compile this and we go ahead and play it, this is just going to make the motor run, but it's never going to stop. And it's just going to bump into something, right? And we also need to create a loop so that it'll continue to look for it. Because if at any time the code does find that it's too close to something, it's unsafe, you know, it's going to stop doing this stuff down here, right? So we want to make sure that we're going to hit that run robot and then tell it to loop back around and continue to work. So long explanation, but let me show you what's going to happen. So Good Lord, I'm getting really good at that today. All right, so what we're going to do, we're going to just play this. We're like, yay, it's still safe. You can see that it's not sensing anything, and it's just going to bonk right into it. And you're like, well, that's not going to do what we want, right? So one, we need to make sure that we have this loop continuously working, right? And now what we need to do is say, hey, when you reach that threshold, when you get three boat, three meters or whatever your decision is going to be and how close you want to get to it, right? We want you to go ahead and do something else. So in this case, we're going to have it just stop. We're going to have it just discontinue moving, right? And we've already got all the bits and pieces, actually. Um, well, most of them, right? We've got our references to motor A and motor B down here, right? Instead of run motor, though, we want to go ahead and stop the motor. So let's go ahead and select motor A. And I'm going to hold control and click on motor B so that I have both of these selected. And I'm going to duplicate them. Yay, control W and put them up here. So there's motor A and there's motor B. So to get a stop motor, right? what we want to go ahead and do is we want to pull off of motor A and just type in stop motor. 
right? And we're looking for this one right here. Now, <clears throat> something I just recently learned is that the macros don't have these little gears on them. Um, in Unreal 5, there's a little bit of different icon. So if you don't see the gear, that's fine. Uh, but what you're looking for is the stop motor right there, right? So let's go ahead and hit escape whoop, and zoom out. And let's get that one again. So stop motor. Um, so there's that one. All right, and then let's go ahead and just duplicate that one. Boop. Oh, not that one. I want that one. Boop. There we go. All right. And then we need to connect all of these pins up. So I can click and drag off of our less than or equal to threshold. Connect it in there. Take the out pin and go in there. And again, we want to put this run robot on there because we want to create a loop, right? Because if it comes up here and it stops, you know, maybe we want it to continue just in case whatever it is that is in the way is going to move. In this case, mm -hmm. the wall is not going to move. We did not build it in there. You can make that happen, though. I mean, Same. yeah, you know, things happen. It's it's a thing, right? So we'll go ahead and connect that out there. I duplicated that again just so that you guys know what's going on. All right, so now we have our stop, right? So let's go ahead and make sure that we comment this out. Comment our code. It's important to do. Whoa. Okay, so I'll press C on the keyboard, and we'll say stop robot. Boom, just like that. So now we have all of our information in here. So real quick before we test this, what we're doing is we're going to start playing the game. We're going to tell it to run the robot. That robot is then going to uh, fire this little event. It's going to look to see if anything's in front of it, right? Look first. And then it's got a decision to make. If it's safe, we're going to continue to move forward, right? If it's unsafe, we're going to go ahead and stop the robot. And then we're going to run that function again. So this just like this one is going to reset this and we're going to get this loop and it's going to go over and over and over and over, right? So let's go ahead and compile that. I'm going to drag this down here below and we'll be able to watch all of this kind of fire down here in the corner, right? And we'll go ahead and hit play. And we've got that out in front of it. And you can watch the code down there below. Oh, and it instantly switched, right? For those that were watching the code and not watching the robot, let's go ahead and do that again. So once it reaches that threshold of 300, it stops, right? And you'll notice that the number on here is about 250, at least on this machine, give or take uh, frame rate. So you're like, well, but it didn't stop at 300. Well, it's because it's coasting just a tiny bit, right? It's, it's still got some momentum to it, right? That inertia behind it is still going to pull it. So this is kind of fun. Check this out. Something we didn't really talk about in this case is this coast. So if I turn this coast on, what it does is it doesn't try and stop immediately, but it kind of continues to coast until it stops, right? Which may or may not be what you want. So let's take a look at what that actually looks like now that those are toggled on, right? So you can see that these are on. Let's zoom out so you can see the code as well. Go ahead and hit play. Wait for it. You see it fires and it's slowly coming to a stop. Oh, buddy, just merp. It eventually will bonk into it. Mm -hmm. right, three, two, one. Oh, it stopped it too. Wow, there you go, right? Mm -hmm. So you can see how far it actually like coasts, right? All right, so let's go ahead and toggle those off. So there we go. This is essentially the code that we have all the way up to, bring this back over here. Right. So down here, a little bit farther. Whoop, yeah, okay, so the, down to the bottom of page, here we are, page 20. Let's actually do that in a darker color there. Page 20, right? So that is everything inside of this. Now you'll notice, I don't know if you guys can see this, but you, like we're at the end of the document. Wow. Oh my God. That was easy. That one's simple, right? <laughs> oh, wait, there's more. Remember that Oof. line we were talking about? Oh, wow. you really did it now. Oh, buddy. There's the line. So with everything that we've gotten thus far through all of the lessons, and then this one included, we have enough information to actually follow this line and stop before we bonk into it. Any of the little uh, uh, barrels that are actually out here, right? So know, should we do that? Should we get should we get a consensus? Is it the thing? Well, heck yeah. yeah. Let's make a thing, well, like do it. Okay. What, run into them or avoid them? Uh, I, I mean, we could do both. I, I, would <laughs> like to, I would like to avoid them. Like, I think we'll end up doing both, whether we like it or not. <laughs> if we're not doing both, then we're not testing thoroughly. Exactly. That's what that right. Okay, so from page 20, uh, what I want to do is come down here to this map, 4-3, distance follow line. Remember, so robot kits and robot maps inside of our lesson four. I'm going to open this one up. I'm going to double click on it. And I've changed stuff in this level as well as the actual robot in there. And this is what this dialogue is asking. Do I want to save any of that? Uh, that's totally up to you. Um, I'm just going to say don't save in this case. That's fine. Not that big of a deal. Stop. 
right? And you'll notice that there, were, I don't know if you saw this, but there was a little asterisk down here and now it's gone. So all that information, things we were moving around is totally gone. So what does this robot do? Well, like a good observer, let's just take a look at this. I'm going to get it play. And this is our robot from lesson three. It'll follow that. And you can see, whoop, let's get a little closer. Whoop, wrong button. Right. So watch the wheels. You can see they kind of spin, turn, spin, turn, right? And that other one's still trying to turn and bring oh, it over. Oh, boy, and stubborn. Stop. Right? Well, nice turn, though. Nice recovery. So it's making it up there. It's making it up there. Uh-oh, uh -oh, careful. It's still trying to go. Dun, dun, still trying to go. I don't like barrels. Okay. <laughs> right? So this is this is where you call up your insurance agent and be like, by the way, I'm installing a safety device. <laughs> yeah. Three barrels <laughs> I have taken <laughs> out. Mm, right. Bye. Um, something about the barrels really quickly too. Uh, there are arrows on this. So when you go to build your own, uh, you can tell which direction the barrel is actually going to be moving. Um, there is also a little orange line on here so you can see uh, where it's starting, where it's ending. Uh, so you can see how far it's actually going to be moving, right? So it's a little bit of information on those that's going to help out. They have no idea what's going on around them, but our robot does. So let's go and select our robot. And over here on the right, let's go into our edit blueprints and go ahead and just open this one up as well. And you can see we've got a little bit more code inside of here. Let's get rid of that one so we don't get confused, right? So when it plays, we're going to run that robot, run the robot, and then this right here is the code pretty much that we came up with from lesson three. So if you hadn't gone through lesson three, let's really briefly talk about this. So when the robot starts working, what it's doing is it's sending that sensor that's looking at the ground and it's saying, hey, by the way, if it's greater than, sorry, if it's less than or equal to, right, we're going to run the motor on one side and stop the motor on the other. And we're basically just kind of zigzagging our way up the line. And if we do see the line, right, what we want to do is we want to zigzag the other direction. So you can see these are actually reversed. So motor A, motor B, motor A, motor B, right? So they're reversed, they're transposed up above and down below. And then we're just going to loop back around and make it work. So we're moving... We're doing it wrong. We're moving first and not looking. <laughs> so we're not looking out ahead of ourselves. So we need to bring that look at uh, function back in here, right? Mm -hmm. So let's make a little bit of room. So I'm going to zoom out quite a bit and I'm going to click and drag and open this up. Right. And was this, what was the, what was the map that you had to open to get into this challenge? Oh yeah. So this was four dash three, the distance four followed line. dash three. Yeah. Okay. And it comes with a robot that line follows, but doesn't do the thing that we just taught the other one to do. Uh, and then, uh, uh, uh. Okay. So if you if you saved, well, I didn't save, right? If you saved, you can just literally copy that information and bring it over. And it's really easy. You just select all those nodes, mm -hmm. Control C, and then if wherever your cursor happens to be, Control V, and you can paste whatever node you happen to have, right? I didn't do that. I'm going to start from scratch. Yeah, we're right? pros. We could do this. We got this. You get better the more you do it. Now, here's the other thing, though. If you did copy and paste it, you may have noticed there's a little error. And the error is coming from, you don't have an actual sensor that's looking out ahead of you in this robot. So we need to add that in, right? This is another reason I'm doing this from scratch. I'm not just copying and pasting it. So let's actually add that one in. So we'll go up to add component. We'll type in distance. We're looking for that BP sensor distance again, right? There it is. Let's go to our viewport. And if we zoom out a little bit, select our distance sensor. You can see that it's inside of our robot, right? It's inside of there. So let's move this forward and we'll use our rotation tool, we'll spin this. Now here we've got another thing that could or could not potentially be an issue. We have one sensor, turn here we go. We've got one sensor that's looking straight down, right? And if this sensor that's inside of here is too far forward, it's gonna get in the way. And we're not gonna be able to like look down, right? It's gonna sense this other sensor. So we've got sensor issues. <laughs> right? So we have to make sure that they're not going to bonk into each other. Now, this is really easy to fix. If they are, you can always just pull one of these things forward a little bit and push this one back, but don't push this one too far in. Otherwise it's going to sense itself. And we're going to get false information, right? Scared Garbage of its own shadow. It's yeah, very much so. <laughs> For those of you that are working on this on February 2nd, let me know. <laughs> did, it, did you spook your own robot? Good Lord, that goes fast. Let's turn that camera speed down in here. Okay. So that's something to be very aware of too, right? Now we could also set this way up here. We could do a lot of crazy things. I'm gonna keep this as simple as possible. Now there's one last thing. And and Brian, can you spot the thing that's not there? Absolutely not. <laughs> Funny how I that know. Works. Wait, 
yes, what you don't have on there is um, wings and a unicorn horn and a giant sledgehammer and five more wheels and a cannon. Well, okay, we're getting to that later, but thank Sorry. you. <laughs> These are just the kind of kids that I teach robotics to. That's True that's story. where it, that's where it goes real quick. All right. So the thing that is missing, it's not up here. What's supposed to be up here? What information is not there? Mm. I'll give you a hint. It has something to Our do with the distance. thing we just added. Yeah, we don't have a distance up there. So for those of you that don't know a lot about Unreal, I'm going to show you something that's actually kind of cool. These little things that you see up above here, these are heads-up display. Uh, they're basically just little widgets. Um, and what they're doing is they're getting information from the sensors, and they're showing up visible here because they're set to visible. It's literally a checkbox. So let me show you where that checkbox is. Over here on the far left-hand side, we have this distance sensor UI. Okay, and this is inherited from the master robot. And you can see that it is there. We just can't see it. Right. So if you want to see that information, like we were seeing before, not super important for this one, but maybe it is right. Select it and then scroll down here a little ways. Right. Keep going. Keep going. And you'll find a section that says rendering. And underneath rendering, there's a visible spot right here with a little checkbox. So if I turn that on, da -da 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 -da, there well, it is. look at and that. And if it's not up here, it may be here, it may be somewhere else. You can just click and drag it and move it up and down so you can put it right wherever you want it. Right. So these are things that are also just kind of built into this project. They're they're not in vanilla Unreal. Um, mm -hmm. We built this specifically for this. So this one doesn't have it on. So I want to make sure that you are aware of where it is and how to actually turn it off. Now, if you don't need this information, this is the other reason I'm showing it. Right. We can come over here into rendering, and I can actually turn that off. Right. So maybe we just want our distance information right there. It's totally nice. up to you. However, you want to make this happen. Right. I'm going to go ahead and leave both of these on just so that we get all of that information. But it's. Again, it's your it's your salt, whatever you want to spice it with. Right? It's super context sensitive, right? So he's clicking on the left to select the actual thing, and that's what's bringing up the little widget to re to move it. It's also mm -hmm. bringing up the details on the right hand side. So if he accidentally like clicked on the distance sensor on the left hand side, and then went to move it, but over clicked and clicked a light sensor on on the uh, like the on the back or something like that. Yeah, mm -hmm. you would he would accidentally select a different thing. So you want to pay attention to what is selected. If you select it on the left hand side, it should show selected in the right. It's also highlighted with that gold outline. And and you hide the wheels. What? <laughs> it's, oh, it's all it's great. Yeah. It's cool. So here's okay, total tangent, but this is kind of cool, right? So let's say we get right up next to some other sumo bot, right? And we've got a distance sensor on it. And they don't know that we've got a giant mallet. And what we can do is we can turn it on and make it visible to let them know what's coming. Like, you know, there's all kinds of crazy things that you can do this. We're, like I said, we're not going into that, but it's totally a fun tangent, right? Okay, now that we have this on here, right? Let's make sure that we compile. And I'm gonna go into my event graph here. And now with this distance sensor, right? Not the UI, that was what was above. We want the actual sensor. I'm gonna click and drag that in. And we're gonna go ahead and run distance sensor with threshold. So this one right here. Cool. So that, let's go ahead and connect this wire over just like we were doing before. Now I'm not gonna mess with uh, the range or the threshold on this one. And the reason is because I know that it'll work well for the speed that it's running. It'll actually stop at this one. Let's do this in a totally different color. It'll stop at this guy. It'll continue moving on. It'll stop at this one and so on and so forth at the rate at which these move and at the rate at which our robot actually travels. Okay. So this is all set up to work by default. You can go in and fiddle with this all you want. I'm going to avoid that for right now. <laughs> so now that we're <laughs> right. So now that we know uh, that this is actually looking forward, right? So if it's, if it's safe, right, we want to continue looking at the ground. And we want to see where that ground piece is. Okay. So if we compile, let's go ahead and move this over. Small changes, small changes, small changes. Let's actually bring this over here. Make sure that we are cool. We've got that one on there. We're going to do this. So yay. Oh, and it sensed it. And now it's going some other direction, right? Because we haven't told it to stop yet. We've just told it to continuously move. And what happened... I'm going to take a look at this, is that it came down here and it fired, and it was like, oh, whoops. So it came over here and it fired and said, okay, well, we were already kind of zigzagging our way across mm. the wire here, and I'm going to continue to zigzag, and then it just gets cut off. Like, it doesn't work anymore. So if I hit play, you can actually see it. 
and then it stops and it quits. And you can see it was really faint, but this one was still actually firing afterwards. So if I stop that, play it again, you can see it kind of go back and forth. And then, okay, so that time it was going down the bottom one, right? And you can see by those little, the little uh, I don't know, I call them knots, I guess. They kind of, kind of flow along. <laughs> so that's kind of cool. So we now know that it's at least moved forward and it'll zigzag back and forth. So now when we are at a point where we are too close to our object within three meters, we want to go ahead and stop our object or stop the uh, this guy from moving. So we have a stop motor. We have motor A. We have a stop motor. We have a motor B. Look at that. We have all the pieces we need. So we can just grab those and I'll duplicate them up here. Let's just set these in line like so. Connect, connect, compile that one. All right, that's oh, good lord come here man <laughs> here we go <laughs> doing, i'm doing excellent 10 for 10 all right here we go all right so i've also created a problem here can anybody guess what it is before ooh, 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 what do you think what do you think, what do you think? What do you think? i have no idea i'm not paying attention oh what are you sitting in the front uh, row i'm sorry you yeah you created a problem Oh, no I, I, oh i do know i do know i have I, i'm using my keen eye of observation and I'm noticing that you have not connected the run robot yeah. back oh, in okay. your other line of code. So it'll just stop running. Yeah. So it's going to stop moving and not doing anything. So with that hypothesis, let's check it, check this out, right? So if we play this and it stops and that thing gets out of the way and it doesn't care. Oh, Zero sleepy cares. boy. Wah, wah, wah. Right. So let's go ahead and add that run motors in there. So I'll grab that one. We'll duplicate that up here, bring that in, like so. Save that one. I like to think of this, what you're doing there with the run robot, this infinite loop. I like to think of that kind of like, as you, you know, think of yourself as a human and how you process information. You're always working, even if you're looking at the same thing and making the same decision. So if you see a stoplight and you're stopped, you're constantly seeing it and you're constantly stopping. Mm -hmm. And when it changes to green, you're now deciding to switch and take a different action and you're mm -hmm. ready to, you know, if it's just red and green, stop and go, then, you know, when it's green, you'll go until you see red and you'll stop. So you're always looking and you're always responding. And that's why we have this loop that we're creating. We're saying, go back to the beginning and start over and check the sensor again. So it's checking the sensor several times per second you know it could be on, on some robots could be hundreds or thousands of times per second that it's it's checking to see what's the status what should i do what's the status what should i do and that's mm -hmm. the purpose of kind of like this real-time programming where the program just runs all the time and it's just doing the state or the the thing that it needs to do based on the current condition mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. absolutely mm -hmm. yep so all right, y'all ready for this? This should, um, this should work. I'm ready for this. Okay, so hit play. All right, so there's doing. And you can watch the code over here on the right. You see it stopped. And it's jumping back and forth to zigzag along the line. Turn the camera so we can actually see this. Zigzag, zigzag, zigzag. Boop, stop. There it goes. And keeps going. And if we get close here, you can see that little distance sensor number at the top of that too. It's getting closer. Oh, oh there it goes. Right, so it stops. So but when we're thinking about self-driving cars and uh, manufacturing robots, like we want them, like if, if somebody walks out in front of it, we want it to stop. Right? We don't want it to necessarily coast. So in this case, we're definitely making sure that it's it's going to stop. Like we don't want it to coast into something. So we're being very careful about that. Um, that doesn't necessarily mean that you all have to do the same thing. But it's definitely something to kind of think about and make sure that you're very aware of because otherwise you have all kinds of problems when it comes down to it. So there we go. Ta -da, ta -da, ta -da, ta -da. That's there's it. Four. That's it. There's the whole thing. Is that it? Ta -da, ta -da. For there's, real? There's nothing, there's nothing down here but a rubric. It's that easy? That's that simple. Um, don't forget, there is that observation log in the bottom of this too. So when you're going through trying to figure out what your threshold needs to be and how far away you want something to actually like activate right, that threshold or how far away you actually want to be looking, you can totally make that decision, right? And write it down.
pay attention, right? For science, mm-hmm. do a science, do a science thing. <laughs> <laughs> do a science. <laughs> do a science. Video games for science, right? That's that's yeah. exactly what we're looking for here. It's kind yeah. of the thing. Yeah, it's super fun. As you get good at, at uh, Unreal Engine and this this kit, your creativity is going to be supercharged and you're going to realize like, hey, what if I want to move this path? Hey, what if I want to make this area bigger? Hey, what if I want to add more obstacles, make them bigger, make them do more things, make the robot go faster? What's the thing that your mind is thinking is next? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. What's next? Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. challenge yourself to go for it. And And I guarantee... Uh, 99.99% of the time and all of the de- dentists would definitely recommend doing it because <laughs> you will laugh uh, almost all of the time. You might cry eventually, but you'll laugh first because mm. these robots mm. can be really funny when they make mistakes and they only make mistakes because you told them to do that. It's your fault. <laughs> yeah. So true. You so don't blame true. the robot. You're, yeah, it's just doing what I'm told. You know, that's that's the robot's job. That's how I do the thing. So. Uh, nice. That's great. So I hope everybody enjoyed that lesson so far. Uh, I don't know if Gatlin's going to put any more uh, icing on this on this dessert here, but we've got. Um, just so you know, uh, you could reach out to us. You could see mm-hmm. our Twitter handles and our names on the screen here, and also you can tag us at Cleverlike on Twitter, Mm -hmm. share the projects you're working on. We'd love to see what you're doing, what you're creating, and what do you want next? What do you think Mm -hmm. could be added to this to make it even better? What's the challenge that we should add next? Uh, Let us know. We'd love to continue to help this kit grow and help everybody learn how to enjoy the wonderful world of robots in Unreal Engine. Cool. Um, I, I really, the only thing that I want to drop in here is that if you're actually bringing in a robot from elsewhere, like lesson three, um, you probably ran into this. Sorry. <laughs> but if I were to grab, uh, let's just go to our robots here, right? So if we're bringing in robot three, we're grabbing one and I drop it in here, you may or may not get this little warning. Um, if this happens, that's totally fine. Just hit the OK button. Uh, we've got it set up so that all you got to do is hit that and just drop it in there. And then you can bring in your robots, no problem. So don't panic. It's a feature, not a bug. You're good to go. <laughs> Awesome. Good job, Gallen. And uh, this is a beautiful, a beautiful project here too. I love the way it's designed. It's, it's super, uh, it's super engaging, a lot of fun. So thanks for all your hard work on, mm-hmm. uh, you know, bringing this to life for everyone. And uh, we look forward to everyone using it. And we'll see you guys all in the next lesson. Oh, thanks for everybody. joining. Amen.